Well, the doctors behind this social experiment, Chris and Zand Van Tulken, join me now. Great to see you both. Very nice to see you. Well, what are we hoping to achieve with this? Well, I, th I think, I guess there's a danger that people go, oh, we're going we're gonna to tell you how to raise you. You're doing it all wrong. We're going to tell you how right. to be a better parent. And, and in fact, I think what we found making the show is that it made us think about our parenting differently. It did make us do things differently. But I guess it, it just asks the question, we raise kids differently all over the world. What can we learn from looking at other places? Mm, and can right. we bring some of that stuff over here? OK, now, look, these children who are abandoned in the it middle of London, totally abandoned. they're I never know, under any danger or anything like that. several of them. <laughs> yes, I know. They're all fine. <laughs> these they're, were the safest they're all monitored. children in Britain. Yeah, they were <laughs> monitored. Right. There were people there watching them. But it, it was a very, very interesting thing to do because we do molly call a coddle our kids a little bit more now, in fact, a lot more now, don't we, than we did before? We, we know that we do. We have data showing that the roaming range that we would have had as children say has diminished just immensely now. Yeah. To a few feet. I mean, yeah. the parents, some season. of the parents in the programme who are totally representative of people all over the yeah. UK, um, uh, uh, their children have literally never gone more than a few feet away from them. Gosh. See, when I was a kid, you went out to play, and you went out to play, and the only reason you went back home is because you were hungry or it was too dark right. to see the football. Right. Right. Uh, but now, <laughs> kids that are like... I, I mean, it really is, actually, I think it's a shame because kids, some kids don't get outside. Yeah. Well, it's... And it isn't that... But the prison inmate stat is the most appalling one, isn't it? It's, yeah. Which I can't, I can't remember the stat. What's the stat? <laughs> <laughs> most children spend less time outdoors than prison inmates. That's it. And in the UK, oh. all of us spend oh. about... 95% of our time indoors. Right. But this isn't just parents being lazy or not thinking about things. We live in a world where we feel surrounded by fear and terror. We're scared. Although, in yeah. fact, the modern world is much safer than the world that we all grew up in. But you would never in. think that. When, when no. you get bombarded on social media yeah. and you get bombarded by headlines about right. terrible things happening to kids, you wouldn't think that. It's interesting you talked about other countries because I remember years ago when I was in Japan and being amazed when I was in the trains in the underground, tiny children on their own, yep. on their own. I mean, when I say tiny, I mean four, five, six, seven, yep. on their own travelling in the underground. You would not do that here. Well, this is we what follow, we follow. We here? follow a, a, a boy, Michi, in Japan, commuting across Tokyo, and we go to Namibia and meet children there who are going to get firewood, and they are frightened of elephants and ghosts. Right. So they have very real and other imagined risks but right. each although children are the same the world over we mm. treat them very very differently we but do. you can't take that out of the <clears throat> so we we bring the kind of commute to, to London and see if these kids can do it, which they can. So your your description of being out late, playing on your own, yeah. it's not just with, you with are... pals, but yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just that you're capable of doing that. These children showed they were much more capable than any of us imagined. Mm. But they also learned huge amounts. You you don't learn to use a map unless you can get lost with a map. Yeah. And you, you, the the, the effects on their brain and their development are enormous. Mm. So it was great fun doing it. It is interesting. I mean, do you think there's a halfway house that we can... You know, we're not saying to people, abandon your children and never look after them and all of that, but at the same time, just be a little... Don't be so overprotective. I, I hope that, watching the programme, no-one will feel bad about their parenting, but they might say, I could find an opportunity, depending on where they live and what they do, to sure. stand, stand a bit further back, even yeah. the literal distance in the playground. I mean, when we were... Chris has got a two-year-old, yeah. and when when she was learning to climb stairs, Chris would say, "You have to have your hands." It literally, <laughs> I was sort of what I, I was there watching. So no, you have to be like, hands next Can't to her. Up she could fall stairs. and die. And, yeah. and I think maybe now, would you say it would be reasonable to stand a little further back? I actively let her fall the last few steps because then right. she very quickly learns to. Be exactly, because if you don't, and it's that thing of, of course, we don't want our kids to get injured, or we don't want anything hideous to happen to them. But sometimes, you know, life is full of risks, and you've got to know how to cope with that. Well, we we know that if you make it to eighteen and you've never encountered risks, you've never touched mm. a sharp knife, handled something hot, fallen off something high, mm. that when you finally are out in the big world, that you you will be unable to handle the yeah, inevitable you risks you'll face. No, it's yeah, you don't you don't want your first danger to be on a on a stag do or at university, yeah. had a few drinks, those sorts of things. Kids, sure. kids who've exposed, been exposed to risk do, do better later mm. in life in lots of ways. It's fascinating. It's an incredible idea. I know it's part of a th it's three, three documentaries episodes. we're going to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, the... look at, we look at boys versus girls. Yes. Um, and how... W w are they different? If they are different, are they born different? Ah, interesting. Who imposes it on them? Right. We look at policing where we... we uh, I think we can give this away. We, we dress up boys as girls, swap them around and watch how strongly 
young kids police gender roles. Oh, so that's so interesting. Give, give six-year-old boys wow. a baby they think is a girl and they will make that baby girl play with a doll. That's really interesting, um, isn't and then it? We, and then we look at good and bad, right, right. and wrong. Kids being naughty. Kids and being naughtiness naughty. is part of growing up. You that's have true. to break the rules to figure out what the rules are. That's very true. And so it's nice. I think that one's nice because any parent watching it will will at least, however naughty their kids are, there's a, there's a sort of nice reassuring thing of going, no, it's OK, it's good for them, it's part of normal development.